Um, okay, I'm Simon Hobbs from Little Engine. Um, I was, I'm going to keep this pretty tight and pretty straight um, and leave things open for questions. So I'm not going to try and try to explain um, a lot of the background detail on what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it. Uh, it should, should make sense to the people that it makes sense to. And but feel, please feel free to ask any questions you like at the end. So I've got the Drupal Slack open here and I'm just open to the Bug Smash um, initiative. And that is basically, uh, I, I suppose you'd call it the way I would say it. it's an attempt to corral, help corral people and direct people and make them more effective at reducing issues in the Drupal core bug queue. Um, so when uh, this started, I sort of thought the usual thought is, I oh, had hey, like to do a bit more bug uh, testing or maybe bug um, patching for Drupal core. Um, but then I face the typical problem where I'm sort of not comfortable with the, what, what the latest is and uh, it takes me a while to set up my environment. So I would had this thought a few times of um, setting up a sort of my preferred kind of environment um, for doing bug fixing. And so I did that and all I'm doing today is just giving you a bit of a, a run through of what I've done and what I'm using for myself. Um, so uh, I have a repository, a public repos repository here. I'm just calling it core dev. So I'll give you just a quick run through of what is in the repository. Um, well, firstly, there's a readme which maybe describes a little bit more about why I'm doing this and some of the, the tooling, but I just want to take you through, I suppose, the, simpl the simplicity of it. I've got an empty directory for um, any config that I might want to export and import into a local Drupal uh, core site. I've got a patches directory for just storing patches that I might create or need to store. Um, for my local site. I have a, um, a basically a templates directory for any sort of preferred files such as settings.php that I want to use locally. And then um, I have a Lando file and a Hoi file. My Lando file is going to is going to help me run up uh, you know the, my local LAMP stack. And I suppose this is where the Lando bit comes into it is as a um, my preference is to use Lando. Um, nothing here is couldn't be done with just Docker straight, Docker Compose or other tools. Um, but I just have a very simple Lando file, which effectively is going to run a Drupal 9 recipe. Um, it sets some configurations such as simple test URLs, the sort of things that I always forget how to, to set up in the first place. And it creates, sets up a couple of databases, one for a local test site, and then the other one is just separately set up for running simple test tests. Uh, or running PHP unit tests. Um, but otherwise, that there's not much to the Lando file. Um, and then I have a, a very simple git ignore, which is just um, which pretty much identifies how this is going to be set up. It won't, I, I'm not going to be committing config and patches that I'm generating. Um, I've got a, a directory for Drush, uh, the vendor directory for Drush, which I'm not going to commit. And I've got you know, a random setup of directories for the Drupal core um, project to be cloned into. Um, you'll notice I've got three here. Uh, I'm actually hard coding everything around 9.1x because I'm doing, I'm interested in patching on the latest version of Drupal core. So it's not really abstracted. I've just set it up to do 9.1x and then that, and, and that's what the directory is called. Um, and then I've got, uh, and then outside, of, um, uh, in addition to that, I have my composer JSON, and that is just installing Drush. So one of the things about doing Drupal core development is, okay, you want Drush, but Drush doesn't ship with core, and there's an issue that says maybe it should. Um, but I really just want to have uh, Drush, but I wanted to install it outside of my, my repository. Uh, my Drupal core repository. So I'm going to do, um, so basically this is all this is doing is giving me the ability to access Drush for this. Um, and that works quite well. And finally, I just have an Ahoy file and Ahoy is just what I'm using to essentially just, just to set up a bunch of commands that I'm going to do regularly. So, and I even had stuff where perhaps I should be able to do it better, but I don't know how to do it, you know, so I hate the files permission thing that sometimes happens when you install Drupal and locks all of your directories. So I've got a command that does that, but I've also got, got commands that just a command to apply a patch um, from a URL. Um, 
So that's basically the repository. And the idea of that is to keep that really simple. I don't want to make it like this huge, massive thing that does a whole bunch of stuff. I just want to, what can I set up there to have the minimum that I need to run up Drupal and to do a patch? So I'll just uh, jump into a demonstration uh, of that. Um, so here, this, so here I have the, um, the repository clone. So this is the way that I run. I'm going to have a terminal for um, that repository that we just looked at. And then inside that I have um, this 91x directory. And so I'm going to be have another terminal. Oops. Okay. And I've changed something. Oh, yes. Right. So I'm going to have another URL with just the um, the directory that um, the the clone, another, sorry, terminal with the clone. And then in my IDE, I'm going to have two as well. And the first one is the outside one because I might want to add something um, useful in into the, the tooling that I've got there. But then I also have actually uh, another um, session sort of for the actual Drupal core because if I'm sort of, if I'm, say, looking for um, files or something, I kind of want to just keep it. I don't want to hit anything outside of this directory when I'm doing my development. So that works fine. Um, so let's, so the, the, the thing that I'm thinking is when I want to, I've got 15 minutes and I would think I might be able to do a patch, is I want to be able to do that pretty quick. So I don't really care what I've worked on before. Um, and I'm happy, and in, in basically I'm happy to nuke, nuke what I've got, I've got there because in theory I've created a patch from the last thing that I did. So the, um, so the idea is um, I'm not going to do the long commands like building and things, so I'm just going to do a lando start to bring up my containers. You can see that I've got um, Nginx, uh, PHP, got a database, the main database, and then test database. Okay, so I get this URL core dev .lando, um, which I'll be using. So the second thing is, all right, I actually don't know what I've done with my Drupal core, so I just want to reset everything that I've done. So I have a command just to do exactly that. So in other words, it's going into that directory and it's just nuking everything. It's just resetting everything, um, making sure that it's as vanilla as possible. So before you notice that I had a dirty git um, status here, what I should get now is a clean git status. Okay, so, so I'm back to square one. And I should be able to look at the top of that and see that, you know, they should the patches that I see there should be relatively recent. So Tuesday, August 4th is great. And then uh, jumping over to Drupal.org, we're looking at, um, say, looking at an issue, and I think I can um, have a go at this. I'm not going to do the actual issue testing and, and review. I'm just going to just apply a patch and just to um, demonstrate that that's been done. So I'll grab the last patch that's on this um, issue, which I think would be this one. So I've got it set up. So I just want to take that URL. I just want to apply the patch. So I have another command that's just I, at this stage, I could just be using git commands, and, and this is actually the only Huawei command that I've got. It almost just demonstrates that, but I can just go into the directory and apply a patch just with a git command. Um, so, okay. so what that's done is it's applied the patch, and it's just given me a git status to show, so basically to confirm that that, that patch has, been, has applied. Um, if I do a git status in here, I get pretty much the same thing over here um, and then I can test. So, and then so to look at, to actually then um, run that up, I just have a command to, sorry, I worry, by install. So what, so what this is doing is it's basically saying, I don't care what's in the database, I don't care what was there before, nuke all that and we're gonna install a new, new copy of Drupal. So, um, so once this is finished, it'll give me a URL to log in. At the same time, I'm just going to reset this for the demonstration. Uh, okay, so I've got a, um, I've got my installation here now, um, so I'll go and have a look at that. So what I want to do with this patch is I'm actually it's actually a patch to check for a new option on the date range thing. So I'm just going to quickly see that my patch is applied. So the first thing I'll do is um, just install the, the, the date range, mo range module. And so there's a command here, a try a hoi drush, and all that's really doing is just making sure that the 
URI, like the directory options, correct? Um, on the when you when it um, SSH is in, makes just makes sure that everything's um, the drush configurations there, so I don't I can just run simple commands. So I'm just doing a drush enable date range uh, date date range. Um, and the the patch that we're looking at doesn't take long to demonstrate. Um, so I'm just um, going to structure content types. If you mistake, um, add field, add a date range field. Jeez. So you can see here that this is a default form um, without the patch. So grab the patch. We apply the patch, and then if I refresh this, um, I get the new this new option. And then at this stage, I so I've, I've managed to do what I wanted to do, which is I wanted to see the patch in action um, physically. I can then, and then the final part of that is perhaps I would like to um, you know run the test against that. So we want to see that we can run the test um, that have that have been changed in that patch. So that's where we could just use Lando to SSH into the container. Um, and so in the container, I'm just going to go into the directory where I think it's, uh, we need to go into core to run this. So, so I want to run, um, vendor bin PHP unit. Then I just going to have a look at that the patch and I'm going to see what tests have been changed there. Oops. So. We've got this. Um, entity test, a date range test. So we'll copy that. But hopefully we can just run. Uh, hopefully this will work. We can run PHP in it and just run that file with those tests in it. Um, and then that then then we're, we're ready, basically ready to go ahead and um, update the tests as well as the code. Um, I think that is basically what I wanted to show you in a kind of a um, quick tour. Um, and I wanted to open up now to questions from you about whether you think, uh, you know, did you have any questions about the process of, of about Bug Smash Initiative, about the process of testing patches that you wanted to ask, um, or, you know, about this, this particular um, repo itself. Um, I'm not going to, I'll let those tests just run as they go. Obviously, it's good to be able to run tests just specifically for a, uh, a single test or a single set of tests in a file um, because they can take a while. Hello, Sai. Uh, very nice, Prezi. Uh, question. I really like the way you were using Ahoy together with Lando. Question, why, why did you use Ahoy and didn't use the Lando tooling? Is it because you keep switching between GovCMS projects and non gafcms projects or because there is a limit on the Lando side? Um, yeah, two, but uh, no, so there's two reasons. One of those reasons you gave is correct. So one of the reasons is um, just generally speaking, I prefer uh, Ahoy because if we do a project, for any sort of project and a, a developer is doing any kind of command for anything, um, I kind of say, well, I would like to be able to run that command if I have to pick up the project and run with it. So we sort of just use Ahoy as just a central way of doing things. So I'm sort of a bit comfortable, I guess, with just using Ahoy for that. Um, the Lando tooling I just haven't done a lot of, probably because the problem was already solved with Ahoy. But um, I would love the, I mean, you know, a project like that, if someone came along and said, can I just set up tooling in Lando to do the same stuff, I would go for it because as I say in the readme for the project, um, using Ahoy makes it less accessible to Windows users. Um, so um, this project would be better with Lando tooling, I think, uh, long story short. Um, and on that similar note, I mean, Lando is not doing anything that, you know, like Docker, you couldn't do with Docker Compose. And if someone came along and said, can we just chuck in a Docker Compose file as well? And some of our little engine projects do that as well because we don't, not all of us prefer Lando. So we've got Lando and we've got Docker Compose, which I kind of don't mind. Um, I kind of feel like that makes everyone a little bit kind of cr across the different things and different technologies that are emerging and comparing them. Um, 
Uh, so I can you talk a bit more about Bug Smash Initiative and how people can get involved? Yeah, good. Um, so how can you get involved in the Bug Smash Initiative? So it's Bug Smash doesn't, in some ways, Bug, Bug Smash doesn't do anything new in the space. It, it's like there's already issue queues, there are already testing channels and so forth. But um, it's a, a there's a, a regular kind of weekly Bug Smash meeting where people can where if you join up to Drupal Slack. Uh, there was a meeting earlier today, so you can basically um, discuss, uh, you know, different issues that you're having around um, fixing bugs, um, what ideas you want to see, you know, what bugs you'd like to see fixed, um, what, and you know, what perhaps um, what you're looking for help on. Um, then there's a Bug Smash uh, landing page, which gives you a bit of a like a starting point to get involved. So. I think the way I kind of see it is like come in here and look at the different areas that you might want to get involved in um, and then you've then got the Bug Smash um, initiative space to really talk that out and say, you know, I'd love to do more work on such and such or, who, you know, who can I help or could is there someone, can I exchange patches with someone? These things aren't necessarily um, not happening in other channels but Bug Smash initiative is a nice friendly place where people can start to get involved uh, and, you know, with the goal of closing issues. Um, I wouldn't say more about it myself. I think it, uh, in you can always talk to people like Lee Rollins, Laralan, and um, like, say, um, Pamela, um, uh, who are in there. So where's, where's who are here? So we've got, yeah, Pamela and Lee are both here in this uh, channel and they're both in the Australia NZ channel. So if you wanted to get involved in Bug Smash Initiative, just put your hand up and say you want to get involved. Thanks, Sai. It's a great initiative. I think there was more than 200 bugs smashed within a matter of a couple of months. Yeah, I'd hope to see uh, some you know, actual visible reduction, you know, as a result of just people just getting in. And I think Drupal, I generally feel that Drupal Core is much nicer to get involved with now, now that things like um, all the old, like, um, all the old test classes and stuff have been replaced. So everything's like runs off PHP unit. Um, it's really clear all the functional tests and unit tests and stuff that are in core uh, is a lot clearer. It's a lot clearer to kind of get a to know. Everything's really well marked in terms of deprecation. So it's really clear if you're a developer, um, you've got a lot more examples to work off if you're trying to write or update tests. So um, I, I tend to think like a lot of the really hard work has happened in Drupal core and it's a good time to get involved in, um, in contributing if you ever wanted to.